at the latest international news. Former Sri Lankan Army Chief General Sarat Fonseca loses his parliamentary seat. Fonseca is to lose his parliamentary seat following his recent indictment by a military tribunal in a case of irregularities in military purchases during his tenure and consequent 13 months rigorous imprisonment. Secretary General of Parliament Damika Kitulagoda on Thursday informed Election Commissioner Dayananda Disnayaka that the seat represented by Fonseca, who leads the opposition Democratic National Alliance DNA, has fallen vacant. The parliamentary system allows the candidate secure in the second highest preferential votes to succeed an elected member of the respective constituency in the event of the incumbent demise or disqualification. Earlier this week, opposition leader Anil Vikramasinghe had requested President Mahinda Raj Paksa to release Fonseca and restore his military honours. Opposition parties, unions and civil society organisations joined in a mass protest yesterday evening against the imprisonment of former army commander Sarath Fonseca and for what they referred to as government dictatorship. The group displayed and posted a number of anti-government posters at the Fort Railway Station and other surrounding areas despite government objections on putting up posters. UNP leader Anil Vikramasinghe, who put up the first poster, said the government should resort to removing the cutouts of the president displayed around the country before they attempted to remove anti-government posters. Democratic People's Front leader Mano Ganeshan said that this is a national issue that the people need to pay attention to. UNP MP Mangala Samaravira said the protest was the first step in a long fight to release General Fonseca. Arab ministers, Arab ministers agree on Friday to give the United States another month to try to persuade Israel to renew curbs on Western West Bank settlement construction and keep Middle East peace talks from collapsing. The one-month grace period was proposed by Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas, who sought Arab support for the idea. The Palestinians say they won't return to the negotiating table unless Israel renews its moratorium on new construction in West Bank settlements, which expired last week after 10 months. Israel has refused to reinstate the moratorium, though it is considered compromises. The dispute has threatened to derail peace talks just for a month after they resumed and U.S. officials have been frantically trying to broker a compromise. Foreign ministers from the 22-member Arab League placed blame for the crisis squarely on the Israeli government, warning of the dangerous consequences of continuing settlement construction in the Palestinian territories and East Jerusalem lands the Palestinians' claim for a future state. Arab League's deputy Ahmed bin Healy said, the group supported Abbas's position, calling for a complete halt of all settlement activities in order to resume negotiation. But the ministers issued another statement agreeing to resume meetings in a month to study alternatives and decide on next steps, giving the United States some breathing room. There was no immediate comment from the Israeli government. Direct us spec negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians began on September 2nd, following several months of indirect contacts then sold over the settlement dispute. Aides have said Abbas wants to avoid the impression that he is quitting talks and instead hopes to buy more time for the U.S. diplomacy. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and Special Mideast Envoy George Mitchell called Arab leaders throughout the week, urging them to persuade the Palestinians not to walk away from the talks. Friday's statement came despite a proposal by moderate Arab nations led by Egypt and Jordan for Abbas to return to indirect talks. Some hardline Arab states, including Syria, opposed any attempt to go back to the talks. Syrian Foreign Minister Balid al muallam who stayed away from the meeting and sent instead Syria's envoy to the Arab League, said he couldn't see any benefit from this meeting. Lebanon boycotted the discussions altogether because of a dispute with Libya. Iran's Finance Minister Shamsuddin Husseini asserts in Washington that Iran is stronger after a host of international sanctions. We have the details. Striking a resolute tone amid international curbs on trade with Islamic Republic and sanctions against firms and individuals linked to the country's controversial nuclear program, Husseini said, after these sanctions, we are a much stronger country. He acknowledged that the sanctions caused some kind of problem for them but he said when people solve problems, they get stronger. 
Husseini was speaking in the U.S. capital of the fringes of the meeting of an international monetary fund's 187 members. His visit comes just over a week after President Barack Obama ordered sanctions against eight senior Iranian officials for alleged human rights abuses during the crackdown against those protesting the 2009 elections. Regardless, Husseini claimed there was no difficulty in trading or securing hard currency to trade with. Questioned about how Iran finds dollars on open markets, he responded, there is no substantive obstacle regarding that. Yet, despite Husseini's claims, evidence in Iran suggests sanctions are taking a toll. Most banks in the United Arab Emirates, Iran's main trading partner, have stopped money transfers there since August after similar decisions by the United States and the European Union over Tehran's nuclear program. Iranian banks have gradually refused to sell individuals hard currency in recent weeks without explanation or any government announcement. The government of Singapore is set to invest 3.7 billion Singapore dollars to further develop the biomedical sciences sector over the next five years. The money will be channeled into research which can lead to real health care solutions. The National Research Agency, ASTAR, is also keen to get the industry more evolved to return good research ideas into market winners. The 3.7 billion Singapore dollars funding is 12% more than the current five-year budget and is part of the 16.1 billion Singapore dollars national budget for research and development activities announced in September. In the last 10 years, the biomedical sciences sector was about building the basics such as growing the pool of scientists and turning lab findings into bedside applications. Now, ASTAR is ready to move things further by stepping up collaborations with industry partners to develop solutions in areas like infectious diseases. China and Turkey intend to raise their trade to $50 billion by 2015 from an expected $17 billion this year, Turkish Prime Minister Tayyip Erdogan said Friday. Erdogan told a joint press conference with Chinese Premier Wen Jiabao that they have set a timetable and that they agree to increase their trade volume to $50 billion in 2015 and to $100 billion in 2020. He said the two sides has also agreed to carry their trade in their national currencies. Wen, the first Chinese Premier to visit Turkey in eight years, underlined the two countries' desire to raise their ties to the level of a strategic partnership. French upper house lawmakers approve a controversial plan to raise the retirement age as unions plan open-ended nationwide strikes against the measure. The Senate definitively adopted the key measure to raise the retirement age from 60 to 62 in a vote on Friday evening. Other points of the reform, including the raising of the age for a full state pension to 67, remain to be voted on and the Senate's deliberations are due to last until October 15th. The government hopes for the reform to be passed in its entirety by the end of the month. Unions which had already called for an open-ended strike in several sectors from Tuesday said on Friday they will also call a further day of popular protests against pension reform on October 16th. The decision was taken at a meeting of France's eight main unions and will mark the second day of weekend protests against President Nicolas Sarkozy's plan to raise the retirement age. They said in a statement that the union's determination to act against the unfair reform remains intact. Workers at state rail company SNCF and the Paris public transport system, as well as the gas and the electricity sectors, are all to go on strike on Tuesday, the fourth day of action in just over a month. Demonstrators took to the streets during two days of protest in September and a third on October 2nd.